everyone. Um, I'm coming to you from my reading corner. Um, and I'm ready to read to you guys um, the next few chapters in The Karate Mouse. Um, so, get ready. Here we go. Chapter 4. Shorty Tao is the trainer. After he finished his exercises, Bruce and I went to pick up Shorty Tao. She was wearing a tracksuit and carrying a duffel bag that was bigger than she was. How could such a tiny little mouse be so strong? Bruce winked at me. Hey, Cheesehead, isn't my cousin in the greatest shape? Ever since we are mouselings, our motto has been, Shorty Tao is the trainer, Bruce Hyena is the champion. Shorty is the trainer? Did that mean they were training me for something? But what? I had a bad feeling about this. Bruce gave my tail an affectionate tug. You're lucky to know us, Cheesehead. As soon as Shorty hopped into the Jeep, she gave Bruce the thumbs up sign. Why? What were they up to? I was afraid to find out. We zoomed away. About 10 minutes later, we arrived at the airport. Bruce and Shorty went to check in by themselves. They kept whispering to each other. Every so often, one of them would glance over and wink at me. But why? Why? My whiskers were knotted with worry. When it was time to go to the boarding gate, they blindfolded me. But why? Oh, why? My tail was tingling with dread and anticipation. Only after we boarded the plane and Bruce had strapped me into my seat did they remove the blindfold. Click, your belt's buckled. You can't escape now, Bruce chuckled. But don't worry, as usual, your old friend Bruce has taken care of everything. That's why I'm CPT. Then he turned to Shorty and they continued their secret powwow. While I tried unsuccessfully to relax, I caught a couple of words. Squeak, squeak, organized, squeak, trading. Trading? So they were going to train me for something? But what? Squeak, did you sign up for, sign him up? Sign me up? Sign me up for what? I didn't like the sound of that. Above all, squeak, did you think he'll make it? Make it? Make what? Where were they taking me? Chapter 5. I had to do something. After a long flight, we finally landed. Hey, Cheesehead, we're here, explained Bruce. Are you hungry? I could eat a cat. Why don't we get a gigantic pizza? Good idea, right? Food was the last thing on my mind. Where was I? Where had they taken me? I, a feeling of uneasiness began to settle in my stomach. The uneasiness quickly moved into gnawing worry. Then the gnawing worry came, became outright anxiety. And finally, the moment, moment came to panic. That was it. I'd had it. Nothing was going to move me from the airplane seat. I clung to it with both paws. I couldn't move a muscle. Bruce and Shorty tried everything they could think of to convince me to get up. Come on, Geronimo, Shorty said. Don't make cheesecake out of me. You'll, you'll see, it's no big deal. Bruce shook his snout sadly. I expected better from you, champ. Look around. Everyone's staring at you. Where did you leave your pride, huh? In New Mouse City, I shouted. Bruce was right. Everyone was staring at me. And I couldn't blame them. It wasn't every day you saw Geronimo Stilton, a best-selling author and publisher, act like such a nincompoop. But there was nothing I could do. It was bigger than me. Have you ever panicked? Trust me, it's a horrid feeling. You can't control yourself. You're not in charge. It's weird. Pinch. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain on my neck. Ouch! What was that? That was Shorty Tao's famous pinch. I'm sorry, Geronimo, she said. I had to do something to help you snap out of it. So I pinched you. Don't you feel better now? I took a deep breath. I guess so. Thank you, Shorty. I, I'm feeling a little better. But before I could finish speaking, I fainted. Chapter 6. <laughs> the Karate World Championship? Geronimo, Geronimo, are you okay? I could hear Shorty squeak. It sounded as if it were far, far away. I shook my snout, trying to wake up. What? Where am I? I mumbled. You're in San Francisco, she said. Bruce and I brought you here. Slowly, I opened my eyes. First, I saw Shorty, then Bruce. He gave me the okay sign. Smiling stupidly, I returned it. Suddenly, Shorty's words sank in. I sat up. Wait a second. What am I doing in San, San Francisco? Shorty looked at Bruce. She shrugged. Geronimo, it's time we told you, she said. You're here to enter a tournament. In a week, you'll compete in the Karate World Championship that will be here, held here in San Francisco. I'll be entering, too. You have seven days to learn all there is to know about karate. I stared at her dumbfounded. 
What do you think? She asked me. I didn't know what to say, so I fainted again. Chapter 7. But I'm a total klutz. When I finally came to, I was in a hotel. I'd been out for so long, I completely missed the whole trip from the airport. Oh good, you're awake again, Shorty said cheerfully. Okay, get yourself cleaned up. We'll meet in the lobby in half an hour, and then we'll head over to the dojo. Your first round of intense training is about to begin. With that, Shorty opened up her huge duffel bag and removed a tiny backpack. She pawed it to me. Here's everything you'll need. Your federation badge, your belt, and your gi. That's the white karate uniform. As we scampered to our room, Bruce put his paw around me. So, Cheesehead, what do you have to say to yourself? Aren't you excited about the surprise we gave you? I mean, think about it. This is probably your only chance to compete in the Karate World Championship. Aren't you a tiny bit grateful? How can I be grateful? I protested. Bruce, you know, know me. I'm a total klutz. He slapped my back so hard I almost toppled over. Champ, let's do it. For shorty towel. Get washed up and we'll begin our training. Reluctantly, I did as he said. What choice did I have? I was trapped thousands of miles from home with two fitness fanatics. Oh, why, oh, why did I have such crazy friends? Half an hour later, the three of us met in the hotel lobby. Then we hopped on the bus to the dojo for my first training session. Tune in next time to see how Bruce does in his karate training. Oh, and also Geronimo. Bye, guys.